hi, this is Elisan from Elisan.com where women live a larger life and play a bigger game. Now I'm still in LA and I'm shooting this video in the comfort of my own room in Ritz Carlton. And today I would like to talk about do you worry too much? You know, just before I came on this trip, even though I had my tickets booked, the rooms booked and everything in place, I still had this little voice that says, well, maybe I should tell um, my mentor and my coach that I'm not coming and, you know, something cropped up and I was in my little bubble of comfort zone where it, is, was, more, it was more comfortable to stay at home than to actually travel to LA. Because after all, it is, a, it is an 18-hour flight and I'm not sure how this 18 hours will turn out, right? Because after all, you know, when I do long distance travel, my husband always travels with me. And this time I am on my own. And I know that it has to be done and it is has to be done for a reason because I needed to learn and experience this entire journey. So that control freak in me kind of like popped up. And you know, there was this need to know exactly what needs to be done, what will happen, to the very nitty gritty detail, like, um, you know, this is the first time, how is it going to be when I transit in Narita, um, you know, how am I going to get to Ritz Carlton, should I take a cab, or will there be a cab for me, will there be a jam, and all that, I worry and worry and worry, right, so I'll be here for nine days, I'll be here for the first part for an event, and then later on, I'm going to go for another event, and so I was thinking, okay, so from Ritz to uh, Santa Monica, how is that going to happen, and stuff like this, there was this whole chain and train of thoughts that just go, da, 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 da. So we tend to worry too much. We have 60,000 thoughts a day and we tend to worry about the future. We tend to worry about the past and then we get stuck. So I told myself that, hey, you know, Elise, since you have already made the decision to go, you need to just follow your gut and go with the flow and trust that you'll be well taken care of. You know, it turns out that the trip has been amazing so far. It is the third day, well, the fourth day right now, you know, today, and I cannot begin to explain how the universe has showed up for me because I showed up. You know, life has been so miraculous, and if you don't believe that you can achieve a miraculous life, you've got to think about it. If you want to live that miraculous life first, you need to believe in miracles. Okay, I cannot tell you how magical LA has been for me. This is not the first time that magic happens for me in LA, even three years ago. And that's another story and I'm not going to bore you and I'll keep it for another time. So let me begin to tell you my entire trip. So beginning of the trip, I booked my ticket, my booked my seats online and there were two, well, not so ideal seats that I wanted to seat. And my ideal seat is a window seat because I enjoy sitting you know, on the wind at the window seat and I enjoy my privacy, right? So there were these two seats I had to choose from. So I called my friend up and I say, hey, which are the two seats that, you know, are the better ones? He says, well, you know, none of them are the ideal ones, you know? So I'm like, okay, so I'll just pick one. The best out of the two. So I checked in, I told, the, I told the guy, I said, you know, is there a window seat? He's like, you know, the flight is pretty full. I can't get you a window seat, but there is a seat also in the middle but at the exit row would you like to take it you know there is more leg room and you know stuff like this i said oh yeah sure why not so i called my husband i said well i got the exit row because that's the most preferred seat and usually people gotta buy that seat and he said you know yeah i expected it because i manifested that for you so i was in my own comfort um i don't have to be stuck in the middle of two rows okay and so i transited in narita and when I was transiting, I, I thought I heard my name. Well, you know, Elizan, you know, in that Japanese accent, I'm like, well, well, it can't be me, you know. My name never got gets called up, you know, or announced over the PA system, right? So I was like, okay, it's not me. So I continued my, you know, drinking my coffee and doing my thing, right? And then again, I heard my name and I'm like, maybe that's me. So I walked up to the ground staff and I say, um, I'm Elise. And at the corner of my eye, I thought I saw a business class boarding ticket. And I'm like, no, I don't think so. Things like this don't really happen to me, you know. And, 
and she handed me the business card. I said, well, um, well, let's, let's, let's check your boarding pass. I need to see your passport to verify the name. And I'm like, holy moly. I just got upgraded to business class, right? And I'm like, oh my god, I was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I called my husband, I'm like, you know what, I got upgraded to business class, oh gosh, things like this do not regularly happen to me, especially upgrading to business class and name my name being called over the PA, things like this usually happen to other people, but not me. And so I was boarded, you know, we, you know, if you are seated in the business class, you get to board first, you know, in the priority line. So I'm like, all right, thank you, universe. I cannot complain. I mean, in my mind, I was going on at, how did it happen? How did it happen? Tell me how, 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 how? And you know what? I was like, you know, the how doesn't really matter because I've already got that seat, right? So you don't have to rationalize how it happened. It happened, all right? So I happily bought it and oh my God, Seriously, oh my god, I got a window seat by the window, I mean duh, and it was one individual seat on its own. Usually in economy class, it's either two or three, right? It's like window, uh, window, middle, and aisle. I got the entire seat, the entire row next to the window, okay? So that was the first miracle, right? And to backtrack a little bit, um, because if you are late to, well, just to put it this way, for the event, I had a free room. It was at the Ritz Carlton, and if it's full, you stay in the Marriott. So for some reason, um, when I said yes to Marriott, the, uh, the reply didn't get through. So I was put in Marriott, and I was given a confirmation number. I was to call Marriott. And to tell them that, hey, you know, I'm coming. But I did not make the reservation. And in my mind, I am going to be in Ritz-Carlton. And I'm going to be in Ritz-Carlton. No matter what, I know I was going to be in Ritz-Carlton. And when I logged onto Facebook, um, one of my mastermind members put on, hey, you know, my roommate's not coming. Anyone want to share a room in Ritz? Of course, I said, yes, me, 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 right? So that was the first miracle that happened on the trip. So I got to stay in Ritz. I got upgraded to first uh, business class, and here's the next miracle. So I'm about to leave to Santa Monica for my another event, and so in this trip, I booked a room to you know I booked to to stay with this family right. It's a homestay, and I have other um, friends going to attend this event as well. So you know, let's meet up tomorrow is the day, and which. Where where are you exactly staying? And she says, okay, this address, 15th Street. I'm like, you know what? I think that we are staying in the same house. She's like, you must be kidding. I say, no, I'm not. So you see how miraculous it is? Like, like as I speak, right, my, I'm getting goosebumps. Like, how smooth this entire trip is. And it is going to be. You know, so we tend to worry so much, like, oh, I can't afford this, I don't have the money, um, this is not for me, I'll start my business in two, three years, and so on and so forth. You know, why are you putting yourself in the future when the future hasn't happened and you need to allow that space for that miraculous to take place? All right, so what I'm saying to you and I'm inviting you to just stop and look at your life right now, right? Are you even allowing that miraculous energy and the universe, God, to come into your life to show you what you need to do to get out of your situation, all right? So if you're telling yourself that, I wish I had the business, I wish I had the body, I wish this, I wish that, I wish to have the money, you need to stop. Stop wishing and start taking action and allow and surrender to the universe and allow the miraculous to take place. I cannot imagine to tell you, uh, you know, how amazing life this journey has been for me. All right, so stop living in your comfort zone. Life begins when you get out of your comfort zone. I am truly blessed and grateful that this trip has happened 
it has just snapped me out of being a control freak and allow that universe and that space to just be. All right, so, you know, if you want to live a miraculous life, then obviously you got to believe in the miraculous. Okay, so have a great week. This is Elisan from LA and see you soon. Bye.